Hey you guys, I'm Christy with AddictedToDecorating.com and today I am working in my studio trying to get some trim work done. And my studio still has a long way to go before it's finished. I still have cabinets that I have to build and I have two doors that still need to be trimmed. Uh, I have baseboards that still need to be installed. But today I thought that I would do my, finish up my window trim because all that it needs is a bit of um, wood filler, sanding, caulk, maybe some priming, and then some painting, and then my three windows will be done. So, because I often get questions about this process as well as the products that I use, I thought that I would bring y'all along with me and share all of the details of this. So let me start out with just some basics here. My windows, as you can see, are already trimmed out. And I have a blog post on my blog about how I trim out the windows. So if you wanna see the style that I have and, and how that's done, uh, you can check out that blog post for the step-by-step -step details. Um, but just for our purposes here, I will mention that this is trimmed out with pre-primed finger joint boards that I get from Home Depot. And they come in all of the standard sizes, you know, one by twos, one by threes, one by fours, one by sixes, one by eights, um, and that, that may be all. But anyway, I like to use the finger joint boards because for when they come pre-primed, um, and they're a little, because they're paint grade, they're a little bit cheaper than solid lumber. And that's always a bonus for me. So anyway, um, now as far as products that I use, I have people ask me quite often what wood filler I use. And I use this one right here. It is plastic wood by DAP. And I get it at Home Depot. And they have three different kinds that I'm aware of. Um, one of them is this, that's just natural color. And this is the one that I always use unless I happen to pick up the wrong one. They have another one that is pink. It goes on pink and then it dries to natural as it dries. That one will cost you more money and I don't recommend it because frankly, I think it's stupid. I mean, come on. Do you really need a color change to tell you when something's dry? I don't think so. You can touch it and see if it's dry. Or you can just use a piece of sandpaper over it and if it sands easily, it's dry. If it doesn't sand easily, it's not dry. Just wait a little bit longer. So anyway, don't ever pay extra for gimmicky stuff like that. I just think that's stupid. And then as far as the caulk that I use, I use this one. It is Alex Fast Dry and also by DAP. And this is a fast dry latex caulk plus silicone and it dries in 20 minutes. So my suggestion is that if you've never caulked before, uh, just get the regular one. Don't just the Alex brand or the Alex caulk. Don't get the fast dry because when it says fast dry, it, it really does dry very quickly. And so if you're new at using caulk, you're just starting out, practicing a little, then the fast dry aspect of this one may frustrate you. Um, so if you're just learning, then don't do the fast dry. If you have experience, the fast dry is wonderful. So, okay, so one question that people ask me quite a bit is how do you know when to use wood filler and when to use caulk? So, I will share with you my rule of thumb for that. But let me explain first that when you have professionals come into your house, you know, and, and do your trim work for you and stuff like that, they will almost always exclusively use caulk on everything. Now, the reason that I don't do that is because as caulk dries, it shrinks just a little bit. And so if you use that on a flat surface to fill in nail holes, then you're gonna be left with this little dimple, basically. And as a perfectionist, that drives me crazy. I can't stand to see those little dimples where the nail holes are. And so I prefer to use wood filler and sand it smooth. 
Um, now I understand why contractors do that because generally they're trying to get it done as quickly as possible and they don't want to have to come back and do all the extra work of sanding. But as DIYers, we have the choice and we have the option and I always try to go with the option that's going to give me the best final result because that's what I'm always going to be happiest with. So for me, that's wood filler. Okay, so let me show you then uh, how I determine where to use wood filler and where to use caulk. So my general rule of thumb is that any, any area on the flat surfaces uh, get wood filler. And that's nail holes, any imperfections like cracks or anything like that in the wood, in the, in the face of the wood. Um, any little knot holes, anything like that that's on the flat surface of the wood will get wood filler. And then here, where two pieces meet and form this little crack, that gets caulked. So that'll get caulked, that right there, this in the corner. Now in some places, it's just a judgment call. These are kind of close to the corner. And so rather than do wood filler and then sand that and then caulk, the caulk will probably just take care of all of it right there. And then this will get caulked. So I think you get it. And my other rule is that I always do wood filler first because it has to be sanded. So the process is wood filler, sand, and then caulk. So let's get started. Okay, so the process of wood filling couldn't be easier. Here's the wood filler, it's what it looks like. And it's just a, a putty. So I just get a little bit on my finger, like such, and just put it right over the hole. And you don't have to be uh, neat about it. And in fact, I try not to smooth it out too much. I try to leave, you know, a little bit of a hump over the nail hole. And the reason for that, again, is because wood filler, just like caulk as it dries, will shrink a little bit. So if you, if you do it like this and you get it perfect, then as it dries, it's gonna leave a little dimple. I hate that. I would rather just come back and do a little sanding. So I build it up just a little bit over the nail hole and just leave it like that. And again, there is no need to be, there's no need to be neat about it, but also there's no need to intentionally make a mess. Just make sure that the whole nail hole is filled and just leave it like that to dry. Okay, so this is the easy part. I'm gonna finish up the wood filling and then I'll come back uh, when it's dry and show you the sanding. filler has dried now so it's ready for sanding and you can do this two ways since um, I'm only working on flat surfaces I could use my little sander just a five inch um, DeWalt sander however um, just be cautious when using a sander like this on a project like this because it can be a little too aggressive it can take off too much of the finish and you know if you take off too much of the primer then you've kind of defeated the purpose of using a pre-primed wood so as much as i love my sander i actually opt just to sand by hand um, using 150 grit sandpaper and i take a piece of the sandpaper and i fold it into quarters tear it into quarters and then just use a quarter of it at a time and I fold it over in half on itself and then just use that. And it doesn't take a lot of work to get it smooth, uh, but you do want to get all of the excess off to where really all that you see is just the little nail hole. And once you're down to that, then obviously stop because if you sand any more, you're going to continue to take off the primer. And you don't want to do that. So I'm going to finish up the sanding and then we can move on to the caulk. Okay. 
Okay, now that all of my nail holes are filled and sanded, I'm ready for the part that I hate the most, which is the caulking. But it's a very important step, so don't ever skip it. Okay, so I've got my caulk and my caulk gun. Um, now, most caulk guns have a spout cutter right here, and you just put the caulk, mine's already cut, but you just put the caulk right in there, and you squeeze the trigger, and it cuts the spout. And then, to make sure that's pulled out all the way, and put your caulk gun in there. I like to cut mine at an angle. Right, you can see right there, it's an at an angle. Um, and then tighten it up and you're ready to go. Okay, in addition to the caulk and the caulk gun, you're also going to need a cup of water, a little bit of um, dishwashing liquid, and some paper towels, and then a damp cloth. So, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of dishwashing liquid into my water and stir it up a little. Okay, and then I take my caulk gun, I hope you can see this, and put a bead of caulk right there in the corner. And one thing you have to realize is that when you caulk, there is going to be waste, and you just kind of have to be okay with that. And once you have your bead of caulk on there, just dip your finger into your water and run it along to get the excess off. And you might have to do this a couple of times. Okay, now a lot of people stop there. The reason that I don't stop there, I don't know if you can see this ridge right here. When I ran my finger across there, it pushed the caulk up to create this ridge. So naturally, I wanna get rid, in fact, it's, it's a little bit right there, and then I can also see a little ridge right here. Well, I don't want those. So that's where the washcloth comes in. Just wrap that thing around your finger and wipe that off. And again, you might have to do this a few times. Okay. And then once you've done that, dip your finger in the water again and just do one final pass over it. And that's it. You have a caulked corner right there. So repeat that about a hundred times and <laughs> the window will be caulked. One thing I did want to mention is that this window is a little bit different from most, simply because I have wallpaper on this wall. Um, generally, I would caulk right here where the trim on the window meets the wall, just so that it's, you know, there's no gap there at all. Um, on this window, since I have wallpaper, I'm not gonna do that. But on the other window, behind my desk area, you can see that there is a gap and no wallpaper, just painted wall. And so I will be caulking all the way around. Well, not on the bottom. I don't caulk on the bottom and I don't caulk on the top here because nobody will ever see that. But on both the sides from the top all the way down to the bottom, I will caulk those where the window trim meets the wall. A fly just flew down my shirt. Sorry, I think a fly just flew down my shirt. <laughs> Son of a gun. Okay, either I imagined it or he's gone now. 
Okay, so I'm on the final step now, and that is to paint. And let me just remind you, as you can see, I'm using pre-primed wood for my trim. Now, if I were using unprimed wood, my next step would be to prime. And my primer of choice is Zinsser Cover Stain. And I always, always use the oil-based. Um, it's by far the best and it'll cover just about anything. If you've got uh, little knots in your wood or anything like that, it will cover it beautifully. So if you're using unprimed wood, prime first, let it dry thoroughly, and then give it a quick sand with um, 220 grit sandpaper. And you know that it's dry enough when you sand it and it comes off in uh, fine dust, like chalk dust. Um, if it starts to pill up or make little, you know, little pancake things on your, uh, on your sandpaper, it's not dry enough. So just let it dry, you know, about an hour more and then try to sand it again. It should always come off in, in uh, chalk dust, fine, fine, fine dust. And that's how you know that it's dry enough. So I get to skip that step because pre-primed wood. Um, so I'm going to be using Bear paint, and the color is Polar Bear. It's what I use for all my trim in my entire house. Uh, and also, I always paint my trim with satin, with a satin finish. That is not standard. Most people use a semi-gloss or a gloss because conventional wisdom has always been that the higher the sheen, the easier it is to clean. Um, I don't really know that that's true anymore just because paint in general has come a long way. The quality of paint has improved. Um, but the reason that I don't use uh, gloss or semi-gloss is just because I don't like a lot of sheen. If you, if you follow my blog for a while, you know I just don't like a lot of sheen on most surfaces. And so I just stick with the satin. Now, one more thing I want to point out is that if you're using a gallon of paint that's previously been open and has just been sitting around for a while, then you might want to add some Floetrol to it. Floetrol is amazing stuff. I like to add it to my paints when I'm painting trim, furniture, cabinets. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If I'm painting walls, it's not necessary but anything where I want a really smooth, flawless finish. And I always buy it by the gallon because I use a lot of it, not just for this stuff, but also for art projects and stuff. So um, it also comes in quart sizes. I think you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. And yeah, I just always have it on hand. And be sure, be very sure that you use it according to the directions. Do not use more than it says. Um, this is not one of those situations where a little bit is good, so a whole lot is better. If you use too much, um, it'll actually have the opposite effect in that, and this has been my experience at least, and that your paint will dry really fast. And also it's just, it makes your paint um, too translucent and you have to, you know, end up painting five or six coats. So never ever use more than what the directions say, which is about, um, I, I think a cup per gallon of paint. So that is all of that. Oh, one more thing on painting. I always use a two and a half inch sash brush with a tiny little handle. Um, I don't like the big long handles. They get in the way. And also the sash brush, which that's the angle, has the angled bristles. It just makes things easier. So I'm going to get started. And here is the finished window trim. I did end up having to sand it some after the first coat of paint, uh, just with some 220 grit sandpaper, and then I gave it a second coat of paint. But it is now finished. Thanks so much for watching. For more DIY projects, you can check out my blog at addictedtodecorating.com. Thanks.